What? And it blew out. It blew, blew out? Yes. Where are you now? I'm right here underneath the underpass. And you have a flat tire? Yes. Okay, well, we'll fix it. I'm not in a good mood. This is not good. Did it pop because you ran into a curb? It could have. She ran into a curb. I did. I think she was I hit on the her curb. curb. Yeah, that's what I did. <sighs> that's what I did. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, were, I really wasn't. Were you calling me when you did? No, I was just quarreling in. So can we get it fixed? Is it? Yeah, we'll just have to change the tire. Oh, it's very sad. <laughs> My hair look okay. It's been a little rough. Do I need a mirror? <sighs> I know. I'm really feeling bad. Now I can't go anywhere. <laughs> we might need to cancel. I thought I had kind of made a mistake. Oh! <laughs> Hi, my name's John Spencer. I'm here with my wife, Lynn. We've been married 42 years, and we're going to talk about marriage again. We're going to talk a little bit about vows. We're going to talk about commitment. We're going to talk about how to become one. So I hope you enjoy this. Take a listen. Hey, in Matthew chapter 19, I want to read a passage of scripture to start off with, and it says, Have you not read, this is Jesus talking, that he who made them, speaking of humankind, at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this reason a man shall leave his father, his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, but one, and what God has joined together, let not man separate. So this is a strong biblical principle of you. You both leave your old world, so to speak, and start a whole new world together. Yes. And I think that's what marriage is. It's a whole new world. It's not me bringing you just into my world or right. me coming into your world, but you start this whole new world. And we've It been takes doing... a while to figure that out, those first yeah. couple of years that, yeah. you know, I'm not coming into your world completely, and you're not coming into my world completely. We're going into a new world together. Right. And it's not easy because no. you're so accustomed to your world, doing right. things your way. Right. I think we talked last time about, you know, Adam finally meets Eve, and it's no longer all about him. Mm -hmm. Now there's another person in the world. That you have to consider and think about. Yeah. And but the, that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a great thing. And I think what's interesting about marriage, having been married for 42 years and also having done a lot of weddings, yeah. is that you you bring all these people together. You bring friends, you bring relatives, you bring mom, you bring dad, you bring grandma, you bring... And then the two stand up together with their closest friends and they look at each other and they make vows. Right. And they sign a legal document. And, and that's an interesting thing. So why, why do we do that? Why don't we just say, hey, I love you, you love me, let's sign the document. Why all the vows, all the ceremony, all the people? What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I just think it gives it a keeping factor, obviously, and as unto the Lord. If you're a Christian, you're making a vow before your friends and family and God. Right. That, um, Lord, I'm going to see this through. And I think you can't keep a commitment if you never made one. Right, so it's an actual, I'm going to make a commitment, I'm going to verbally make right. it, I'm going to legally make, make it. it, and it's an interesting thing, like you actually say things like, I promise to love you in good times and bad. Yeah, I don't think you know completely of what all that it means, but I do think you know enough to know that you're making a commitment to another person, and in our culture, that's um, fading away. Sure, yeah. It's I'm making a commitment till I don't want to be committed anymore. Or till I don't feel like I love you anymore. Or things don't go the way I think they should. And I think that when you make that commitment, it's easy, it's, you're more apt to keep it. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of like if you think about the Old Testament. Um, God made a commitment to right. Israel. He made a commitment to Abraham. Abraham made a commitment to God. I'll leave my, my father, my yeah. parents, and I'll... And he wrote it down. And he wrote it down. And I'll, and I'll follow you. Right. And I think in some ways, marriage is a covenant. It's a vow. Sure. And it mirrors what God does. 
Right. And and here, here's what's interesting about that, if you want to use that illustration for marriage, about Abraham. You know, Abraham, mm -hmm. I'm sure he thought when God took him outside, he said, Turn look up at the stars. I'm going to bless the nations with your vow to yeah. me, your covenant. And I'm sure Abraham thought this. That's a great point. Me? Yeah. And I think sometimes we don't realize what God's going to do. What God's going to do just through a marriage commitment. Sure. Like, like you and I met this couple the other day, and they were nice people, and you know they they were they had their jobs and all this, and then you asked them how long they've been married, right? right. And what'd she say? She said we've been married thirty nine years. Yeah. And I said, all right, we're both relics. John and I have been married for 42 years. But here's the thing. When you said that and when she gave you an answer, yeah, it totally changed our perspective about them as a Absolutely. couple. Absolutely. Beforehand, we thought, uh, oh, they've probably been yeah. married a couple, three yeah. or four times. Uh, they're kind of, you know, dress well. They're kind of sure. hip. We think we sized them up and we yeah. were all wrong. We're all wrong. But what was interesting to me was, when I found out that he and she had been married that long, yeah, it changed my image of who they were. It really did. It made me think, oh, these guys know they've what it means. They've got war wounds. They're, yeah. They've made it through some things. Yeah, and they they've have... They've weathered life a little bit. They've kept their vows. They've kept their vows. And I think that, you know, when you look back on life and you make a commitment to the Lord and you, you get there... You know, say if you've been a Christian for quite a while, you look back and go, wow, yeah. you know, God's kept his promises. Yes. And I may not have always kept mine completely perfect, but I've hung in there. Right. And I think marriage somehow, some way, which was begun by God, demonstrates his faithfulness and his commitment to us and ours to him. Yeah. And just like hopefully people can look at our marriage like we looked at that one that sure. we only knew for a few minutes yeah and go wow yeah you know how do they do that well it's it's really because god's in the midst of it right makes all the difference in the world yeah. god's grace yeah. the ability to forgive the ability to laugh the ability to pray about things and the um, obviously keeping god in the center and that's not always easy yeah and, and marriage helps. marriage is um is a commitment and but it's something I think that just once again demonstrates God's commitment in a powerful way. Right. I, I've often heard and, and I think it's true that someone said the best thing you can give your kids is a good marriage. Well, that's the truth. Yeah. yeah. I think if they see something that's working, they feel secure, they feel loved. And when they get older and start, you know, venturing out in relationships and come to that age where they can marry, they, they look for that. And that's been a, a, a good role model for them. It's so good to have role models. You know, you and I, I come from a home that where my mom and dad were married for a very right. long time. Yeah. And so I saw that modeled and didn't see any other options for it. You came from a different situation. Totally different. And, and I think at the same time, you were committed to the idea of marriage, but we were going to have to see how that worked out for you. You know, I think you were just kind of like, this yeah. is what my dad left, you know. That was the problem. No. no. Here, here's what Not happened the, in my scenario. Yeah. My mom divorced when I was 16. She remarried. But then I watched my older brother go through a divorce. Right. I watched my older sister go through a divorce. And I was still single at that time. And then having a conversion experience coming to Christ, I still had never seen a successful marriage right. close up. And so here you and I meet, we get married and I'm pretty much determined in my heart and mind that, Hey, awesome. I want this to be something I can make a success in my right. life. And, um, you know, it's one thing to say, Hey, Lynn, I'll, I'll pick you up at seven and we go out on a date. It's another thing to stand before a group of people and say, you know, regardless of sickness or mm -hmm. health or, or, uh, whatever it might be, that I'll stick it out. Right. I think that's what marriage is, and that's why it chisels us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's something about the vows and the commitment and the whole thing of marriage that I think is just not taken very seriously this day. Not really. And yeah. that's why it's uh, when I see somebody or meet a couple, I, I laugh and I say, we're relics, and they laugh too because they, they, realize that it's unusual to find but that's only but for the grace of god right you know it's 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 a 
rare thing to find people that have spent a, a lifetime together, growing together in their marriage. Well, when you when you going back to the vow thing, when you say I, I promise to love you, you know, in sickness and health, rich or poor, you know, um, you have to I think stop and ask that. What does that What does that mean to love one another? I mean, it's not <laughs> just feelings. No, it's not just emotions. It's not just uh, it's not I love you when you're. When you're nice looking, I love you when you're healthy. I love you when you're skinny. I love you when God, you're... That sounds like me all along. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Yeah, it, I know. No, not... I don't love you because I don't love you if I love you. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think when you first get married that you really understand any of it um, completely. Obviously, you do have some marriage counseling and you do have the word of God that you're, you know, basing your marriage on. But I think as you grow in your marriage, you realize the give and take that's involved, the uh, unconditionalness of the love that you have for each other, the stuff that mm. comes in, the stuff that uh, comes into a marriage and creates tension. Uh, but, you know, I think you have to work on your marriage. I think that you, if you leave it to just grow, it won't, it'll just dry up and it'll just won't be a source of joy or a source of celebration. Um, we talked about that a little bit before, and I feel like, um, Marriage is a great thing, and it can be the best thing that, you know, relationship that you enjoy um, as you walk through life. But, yeah, I mean, you make a commitment, and, and you work it out together, and you forgive each other, and you and you move on on some things. Well, last time we talked about iron, sharpening iron. And yeah. You know that there's a scripture that says, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And you think about that passage. I mean, who we, we all understand everybody's our neighbor, but... It's pretty easy to love people from a distance. Sure. Like your neighbor pulls up in the driveway next hey, to you. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Pete? How's it going, Jim? And, you know, you may talk about some things, not usually very deep things, and their life, unless you let them in, doesn't really impact you very much. But the marriage relationship, I've heard someone say, that's really the groundwork where God teaches you how to love someone else as yourself. Sure. Because they're involved in every area of your life. I know sometimes I'd say to you, just let's just talk to each other like we're dating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's just act like we're dating today. Yeah. So, and that does, you know, make it more of a challenge to be yourself, but at the same time, be kind to each well, other. Well, sure. I, I'm not talking about not being kind. What I'm talking about is that Reality. Ave the avenue of growing right. in the perspective of loving someone. Right. That... The marriage is the place truly where you learn to respond in obedience to that command, love your neighbor as yourself. Because you meet this person. We met, you were a total stranger when I met you. Totally. Completely. You were from the <laughs> north, I was from the south. Yeah. A stranger. And slowly you get to know this person right. better than anyone else in your whole life. And that expression that we call marriage becomes the testing ground so to speak for learning how to love someone else as your neighbor yeah you know what i mean because I where else are you going to have that kind of interaction right nowhere and you got to work on it yeah, yeah. but it's a fun thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard someone say it's so it's like the old proverb you know why does the dog chase the car and what happens if he catches it i mean if a dog you see dogs chase cars dogs. You think, Is like that like What's he going to do if he catches the car? Right. Well, everyone, I think, is looking for love. Uh -huh. And so what do you do? Once you get it. When you get it. And that's marriage. Yeah. Love comes to live at your house. And suddenly, oh, what I've always thought I looked for is now here. Yeah. And what do I do with it? Yeah, you love her. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's marriage. Yeah. So you figure out, okay, I, I found this person, or she found me, or I found her. We found each other. We've left our other worlds. We started new. What does that look like? Right. And that's what you begin. I think, you know, just like Christ said, you know, for a husband to die, he would die for his wife. He right. would, that's yeah. happening. That's <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what all that means? Yeah. And all I got to do is respect you. All you got to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's part part of it. Cause that's a big job. That's a big job. Yeah. Love and respect. Love and respect. But that's the whole thing. You know, you have this person who comes into your life and they don't go away. Yeah. And you're committed to the relationship. Yeah. 
and that in of itself is the big i think you know part of what it means to learn how to love yes and it's it's a it's a similar thing you know with christ and your relationship with him he comes into your life you say okay lord i give myself to you completely and then you begin to learn Finding what that out, really yeah, means. Yeah. It's, a, it's a similar picture with marriage. I think that's why, you know, God, God created you, he created me, and he gave you to me mm-hmm. and me to you. Because mm-hmm. only God can give people. He's the only one who makes them. Right. For a while. We're For a while, lo- yes. We're on loan. Well, it's not eternity, but till death do I us part. I hope it is. Well, it's, it's not. Heaven. You're not married in heaven. I know. I wonder what that's going to look like. I don't know. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting thing. What do you mean? If I see you with another girl. <laughs> I don't think there's, no, I don't, there's no marriage in heaven. No, there's not. But I think there's going to be some kind of a commitment. No, I don't think so. Really? Hmm. We'll see. It said you'll be like the angels. They didn't, they're neither are married or given in marriage. Yeah, I mean, I know that. So maybe it's, it's, a, it's a non-marriage thing. I'll have a whole heavenly perspective when I get up there. Yeah, I hope so. Definitely. So, so this, this talk about marriage today, we're talking, in my mind, we're talking about commitment, we're talking uh-huh. about vows, we're talking about, you know, what it means to, to walk it out for the long haul, and how it represents God's faithfulness in our life. Mm-hmm. Like, I would hope that... Thank goodness, God's faithfulness. Oh yeah, I would hope that Abraham's commitment to God, and how it blessed, even out of it came a great right. nation that our relationship and commitment to Christ and one another would also be a blessing and it would also be something that out of it God creates something. I mean, we've got 11 grandkids, Mm -hmm. three children. I mean, out of it is coming hopefully a whole different world than the one I grew up in. Right. My kids grew up in a Christian home. They went to a Christian school. Our kids, not mine. And now they've got kids and we're building a legacy that's hopefully a blessing to not just us, but to the world. Yeah, hopefully that's true. As believers are being sent out into the world. And we're enjoying it along the way. Oh, sure. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, of course. But you know what I'm talking about? That I perspective do. of, of yes. God is taking a marriage. And doing something. And doing something. It's not just for us. Right. Well, his analogy of the church being his bride, he definitely has um, that perspective of a marriage when he talks about his love relationship with, with his church and his people. Yeah. I mean, I, I think about when we met mm-hmm. and we kind of went through this thing where you lived in um, Springfield, Massachusetts. Springfield, Massachusetts. I lived down here in Northwest Florida. Right. We wrote letters. We made phone calls. We and wrote then, letters every day. Right. I remember that every day because there was no cell phones back no, then. There no and there was phone. long distance phone calls. And we made a long distance phone call at after hours on 11.30 on a Saturday night. I thought it was a Friday night. It could have been. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a Friday Probably night. it was a Friday night. Yeah. And, and, but here's the thing. So we finally got married. Uh-huh. We got engaged. We got married. And you did leave your world. I did. You left West Springfield, Massachusetts. And I came down to Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. And I thought I had kind of made a mistake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't like all the heat and all of that. Oh, you so loved it back then. You used I to go to the beach all the time. Then. Yeah, but I'm a New Englander, a New Yorker, and I do like oh the change of seasons. But <laughs> yeah, we've tried to adapt to that. <laughs> Absolutely. But the, the yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard at first because no. after I can remember at about six months after being married, I thought, "Oh my gosh, I can't go home." Right. And that was a little scary to me at first. Yeah. Like, wow. So trying to figure it out and uh, obviously crazy about you, but just trying to figure out, wow, this is, this is serious. This is for life yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And the point I was making was yeah. you, you left your home yes. completely and came here and we started this new world and then eventually both left and right. headed we went for, to, Kansas to City. another state. Egypt, as you call it. It was pretty much Egypt. It was in the middle of the country. Inland. Inland. No water, no surf. Kansas no City, Missouri for yeah. three years. But there God did some great things. And um, he brought us back here, which we never Very, really expected to right, do. Right, we didn't expect that. No. And, you know, I, th- I think, you know, talking about marriage, the one thing that I, I wanted to to try and bring into the discussion was that hmm. a committed marriage that lasts a lifetime 
is a great picture mm -hmm. of the commitment that God makes to us and we make to him. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a shadow of that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't compare to the great commitment he's made, but it certainly is an amazing shadow and mirror of what yeah. God desires people to see in a relationship with him, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. yeah. And so I think when, when marriages fail, when they don't uh, live up to their commitments, in one way it's breaking a testimony and something that God wants the world to see that has to do with his character. That's why it's probably so under attack Yeah, today. I think so. Um, yeah. Just as even... Because that verse I read at the very beginning, it says, so then they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, yeah. let not man separate. In other words, I shouldn't break it. You shouldn't break it. We should love one another, work through it, grow in it, and be a testimony of what God's called but us to But knowing be. that there's a battle out there, because there is an enemy that would is oh, yeah. come to kill, steal, and destroy, and yeah. he'll erode uh, anything that God is trying to do for good, yeah. and he will get us if we're not focused on him and asking the Lord to help us be like him as we are in our relationships. It's just not an easy thing. It's a, it's a lifetime. It takes a lifetime. Yeah. And, the, and I guess the point of this conversation sure. and our time sharing here is that the world needs to see mm -hmm. that God's faithful and he can see it powerfully through a marriage that sticks together right. and demonstrates his faithfulness. Yes. And and that's what I think we're trying to do. That's what I encourage marriages to do. Like, you know, the enemy wants to give you a an out, uh, mm -hmm. take the easy way out, so to speak. But the Lord wants you to be shaped and fashioned and formed and demonstrate by example his faithfulness because he created marriage and I believe he can sustain marriage right. if we'll let him. Thank goodness, yeah, yeah. that he does that. Yeah, and He's that's kind of, you know, I, I think we could close this thing out by just saying, you know, don't give up, continue in the relationship. And enjoy it. Enjoy it, make your yeah, marriage a priority. A good, sure. And it can be the greatest thing on earth. All right. One half. I pulled in. <laughs> I think I hit that curve right there. You don't think. Look at that. That's just a shame. <laughs> what would it mean like? I really didn't even, I just freaked me out when it happened. Where did I thought I'd just go ahead and pull it under here because I knew this was going to happen. Oh my I've never had a flat tire. <laughs>